So in, in the good old days of uh, pan crude, this is a sample now I'm holding in my hand of Pennsylvania crude. You can see how fluid that is, or low viscosity. Uh, you, can, you can really see that it's almost drinkable. I'm tempted actually to take a sip from this now, but that's probably against regulations here in the, in the museum. Now for this you would not need any hydro treatment because this is virtually no sulfur in it. But uh, the current crude oils, which would be much more viscous than this, much more aromatic, this is essentially paraffinic uh, crude, um, then you would really need hydro treatment to remove sulfur, nitrogen, or metals associated with this. This is uh, an extinct crude oil. This is the, uh, the early Pennsylvania crude. Here we see some samples of uh, Pennsylvania crude oil, the first crude that was uh, drilled and, and produced in, uh, in the United States. Uh, and uh, pan crude, or Pennsylvania crude, is a very special crude oil. It is the sweetest. The sweet means, in this case, not really uh, with a lot of sugar, but very low sulfur. So you can see the light color of the crude oil. This is actually it came uh, as it came from the uh, from underground, without any refining. This is very rare now, and pan crude is, is pretty much extinct these days. This was so sweet that some entrepreneurs could actually sell this as a remedy. There was one man uh, was uh, Samuel Kears in Pittsburgh. I think he was in Canal Street. He uh, put uh, the pan crude in pint bottles and sold them as remedies for different ailments uh, such as stomach aches, headaches, or uh, growing mustache on young boys who wanted to have mustache to show off. Um, so uh, sour crude oils obviously are what we have today. That means high sulfur crude oil which would require quite a bit of hydro treatment to remove sulfur, unlike the sweet pan crude grade oil. Having talked about the separation processes and the conversion units, we are now uh, ready to talk about the finishing processes. That's the third kind of uh, processes used in petroleum refining. Now finishing uh, is, is done essentially to uh, make sure that the product that is leaving the refinery is compliant with the required performance specifications such as octane number for gasoline or cetane number for diesel fuel and also with environmental regulations like sulfur, nitrogen or metal contents of these fuels so that are uh, leaving the refinery to be sold in the marketplace. So the finishing processes are hydro treatment and blending. We do categorize them into these two uh, main categories. In hydro treatment, the point is to remove the header atom, whatever that is, sulfur, nitrogen, or metal, with the help of a catalyst and hydrogen. So uh, the objective is to use the minimum amount of hydrogen and make the minimum amount of change in the hydrocarbon structure of your uh, feed materials to remove the sulfur, nitrogen, or, or metal out. Uh, minimizing hydrogen is important because hydrogen uh, is a very expensive uh, chemical or material. And of course, uh, hydro treatment or finishing is not the place to make the chemical changes desired in the hydrocarbon skeleton or hydrocarbon structure. Conversion processes uh, do that. So in hydro treatment then, we would need catalysts. These are typically uh, supported catalysts. The support is alumina, silica, uh, in some cases mixed oxides and the metals typically molybdenum, cobalt or nickel that are put on these uh, supports 
we need these metals to dissociate molecular hydrogen so that it can actually react with these heteroatom species. In hydrodesulfurization, we remove sulfur as H2S, which is an acidic gas, nitrogen as ammonia, which is a base. So the purpose of hydrogen is to really seek out and find that heteroatom and pull that out of the hydrocarbon structure as H2S for sulfur and ammonia as uh, from the, uh, the nitrogen containing species. The metals, typically uh, vanadium and nickel, are separated as sulfides on catalyst surfaces. A pretty interesting chemistry as we will discuss in this, uh, in this lesson. So hydro treatment uh, would give us the desirable heteroatom content or regulated uh, heteroatom content in the, in the products. With blending, we need to look into all the specifications that are needed for a given product. For example, for diesel fuel, the viscosity or pour point could be important. And uh, typically in a refinery to make a product like gasoline or diesel, you will be blending a large number of streams. Remember, there are quite a few different streams coming from different conversion processes or separation processes to be blended to make these final products. For gasoline, it's the octane number. So we will uh, go through some of the, uh, the procedures we can use to calculate the prop physical properties like pore point or viscosity of uh, these blends to make sure that they actually follow the specifications needed for these uh, products. You would see that many of these uh, calculations are nonlinear. If you take, uh, say, a sample A and sample B, blend them uh, together, the viscosity of that blend would not be the average of the two using essentially a linear mixing formula. So uh, there are correlations that were developed to incorporate these nonlinearities into calculating, determining the final properties of the blends from uh, uh, multiple streams to make the final products from the refinery.